Yo, 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 welcome to Crate 808. And today we are going to summarize our three album run series. We've had some incredible guests on, people I've wanted to go out there and just talk to about hip hop three album runs in the 90s. And on the cherry on top of that list for me was always going to be I need to go see Dead End Hip Hop because these guys, I've been listening to them, well, for years now. Uh, and yeah, they're always bringing just just interesting takes or just a lot of energy and fun so i thought you know what let's go hit them up and let's do a little bit of a round table about three album runs to cap the series off so today we've got these guys up uh, so yes up coming up we're going to be talking to mike uh, rod ken and bz and uh, yeah we're going to really dive in to their 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 thoughts on fa- favorite rap hip-hop album runs so yeah get ready for it and uh let's dive in boom man i'm just out here fan of your work i'm like ready to talk about three album runs so i was like who do i want to hear talking about these runs and there were certain people (laughs) and then there was you guys i was like how can we conclude it man dead end hip-hop i love the way you guys chat about hip-hop how are you guys doing with this whole notion of three album runs that i propose to you guys uh, I have like a large list. <laughs> I have a big yeah. list. There's of, a lot of people. Man. It's a lot of people. I got, I got, I got a list with mainstream underground. Like I was coming up with a, a long list of people who I felt that had good three album runs. You know, for me, <laughs> right. I did all. I didn't just do the homework. I did the shit for next week. Right. I, mean, <laughs> man, I was looking forward to this. This, 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 this was really, this was fun. You know what? When, when he, uh, for, when Mike first told us what we, we part of the thing we were going to be talking about, I was like, damn, I really couldn't think of many people just off the top of my really? head. Yeah. Like oh, three wow. album run, bro. Yeah. Like yeah. That, but again, like, like that, that, you know, I was like, I could think of artists right in the nineties. Right. Cause technically that's like golden age or yeah. whatever, but a three album run though, is what I was just like, hold There's on. There's so many. Right. So when I started looking, I was like, oh shit, this is actually going to be a little complicated than I thought. So yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to see what you guys have too. So yeah, like that's the thing too, man. When we do these, we don't even discuss what you know what we find out. We just come in and just talk about it. So yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, man. But that's the best way. That's the best way. The energy, man. Yeah. I mean, I didn't yeah. know how you guys want to kick it off, but like, if anyone's got any that they think are because we did 90s yeah but i'm talking to you guys so i'm open to branching this outside of the 90s as well but is there any run that you guys were like well that's a definite or there were like a few runs where you were like that's concrete like top 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 you know kind of runs was there any that hit you straight away outside of the 90s or are we sticking with 90s right now let's Starting go with, with 90s, 90s for now and then outside of the 90s yeah afterwards mm-hmm. but yeah for now 90s was there any of the 90s where you were like yeah man those runs so I can go with the first one I, that really came to my mind before even doing any type of research. Mm-hmm. And that was Ice Cube. God damn it. That was just saying. <laughs> that was oh, the f- that's on my list. But, 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 but no, I don't care about your list. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody on your list. I know. You got everybody yeah. on your fucking list. <laughs> right, right. I probably got a lot of bees too, but man, yeah. And, and, and I'll let everybody else go with that one. But man, that was the very first one, but that's not my pick though. That's not my pick. So, but that was the very first one I thought of just, just you know, off top. Mm-hmm. You know, that I was like, yo, that, that's the one. Cause we talk about that pretty often here uh, about that Ice Cube run. Mm-hmm. I want to know who the fuck had a better run in the 90s than Cube. Oh, word? Like Tribe, maybe? But nah. Who? Okay. All right. Pop? On. Yes. So I was okay. going to go with Pop. All right. That's fair. And, and, with, and the with, thing which about. Three albums? Right. So okay. see, be on it. Be on it. Because <laughs> guys be on it. Be on it. So, so, so let, me, let, let me. Let me. This, 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 this one will fuck you up, B. This one will fuck you up. No, no, I'm asking. Wait, wait, wait. I'm genuinely asking. Wait, wait, wait. I'm genuinely asking. Wait, because. Uh, hold on a second. Wait, wait. wait where's the Pac? Because I, I, I had to screenshot a couple different ones. So Pac is real interesting because I can go either way with this, right? Mm-hmm. So I can start. So I could start like 93, 95, 96, like, cause you got Strictly For My mm-hmm. Niggas in 93, Me Against The World in 1995, and All Eyes On Me in 96. That's I can I go that way, mm-hmm. but the way I prefer to go is starting with Me Against The World, All mm-hmm. Eyes mm-hmm. On Me, and, and, and uh, Illuminati. Yeah, Machiavelli. Mm-hmm. That's the way I would go. But mm-hmm. I think you could go either way with that. So that's what I thought was real interesting about Pac's discography or whatever. You could start early, and, and go, or you can start a little later and go for the three album run. Huh? You start 93? Yeah, me? I, 
That's how I had mine. My that's how I had mine. Yeah. So I had mine like that. I had streaking for my niggas, me against the world, and all eyes on me. See, I, I would rather yeah. go all eyes on me. Uh, I'm me sorry, against me the against the world, all, all eyes, eyes on, on me, and, and Machiavelli. Because Machiavelli is probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, uh, pop album. Pop album. Hmm. So I would go that way. You can, yeah, but, you can. Yeah, man, I thought that was super dope. I thought that was super dope. Rod, I'm with you, man. Rod, that's me, bro. <laughs> I, 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 that's my run. I, I, I love Street from My Ends, but man, that, that yeah. three, the Don Illuminati, man. The fact that he man. made that and it wasn't even like, he approached the producers who weren't even like the bro. main producers. That's sick, man. Uh, I was trying to tell you, man, I listened to a lot of Pac in the 90s. I, mm. I, I listened to a lot of Pac in the 90s, man. Like he was literally my favorite rapper until Jay came around. And, and like, yeah, so yeah, I, I listen to a lot of Pac, man. So I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't put Pac as, as, as my choice. Even though I love that Cube run, I, I, I still put Pac a little over it. Okay, okay. Uh, anybody else got any to go against that? I mean, Pac's one is unreal, but... Yeah. Oh, I thought you was about to go. You haven't dying to look at your fucking. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I got, I got so many, man. I know. Um, so who's your pick? Though? Who's like, standout? Who, who did you... yeah, I didn't see. I didn't understand. I didn't know if we had to have like a pick or like, you know, we just talk about different three album runs. What was your what? favorite one? Right. What was your favorite one? Especially since you got a lot of them. <laughs> He ain't do that part. Uh, yeah. See, he did his homework, that but he ain't do all cool. of it. B was one of them half-ass homework dudes. <laughs> so my favorite. <laughs> see that? See that? I would say my favorite. If I'm picking one, I would say the roots. Do you want more? Illidelph Half Life and things fall apart. Oh. Pop. Yeah. You said yeah, like easy. Woo. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah. Damn. I mean, because I play these albums more than Pac albums. So okay. yeah. All right. I still I I put my I put my my Pac on the table against that. Do you think you can listen to that Roots run like in any situation though? Like with Pac, I think that that run is like so highly energetic. All eyes on me, you can play that at any party. Whereas Roots, I have to be in a bit of a mindset for Roots, but I'm mm. a mate, that's, that's wicked that you've dropped that three because we haven't tackled that on the series and I want to at some point. So B, come on, man, we'll talk about that. Come on, <laughs> come on and we'll talk about it. But yeah, I mean, what, what was it about that run then that put it above pack for you? Was it just the fact that you rinsed it more? Um, it was just, man, the Roots was just, that was a group that it was like, the, the Roots was one of those groups I, I was attached on since the very beginning. So to see them, mm. so to see them, see their progression throughout their entire careers and then that particular album, I, I know where I was at. I remember what I was doing when those three albums that came out and the fact that Black Thought and, and Malik B was just ripping, fucking the fucking mic up, <laughs> tearing that shit up. And then you had live instrumentation in that shit too on top of that. Mm. So yeah, I think, I think, you just that that shit was unheard of at the time, man. I, I, I love I love that those three albums, man. Ill Dove Half Life is easily one of my favorite, maybe top two, top three favorite albums of the nineties decade. So damn. Yeah. And then Black Thoughts is one of his favorite. And Black Thought is like my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite MC. So it's just like it's yeah. all there. Yeah. They showed a lot of growth in that run as well. Cause I think it went from what was that, 94, 95 to like end of the decade, right? It's like 99, late 99 or whatever that Things Fall Apart came out. So that's a, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I was, Things Fall Apart came out 99. It came yeah, out 99. Right. Yep. So I remember that they were completely different by the time that yep. came out to when I yep. first heard them. I was like, wow, these guys were an actual like band, you know, that was crazy. And it's crazy because Things Fall Apart was, that was kind of like the album that kind of took them a little bit mainstream. Like mm -hmm. that's when they started getting a little bit more mainstream recognition with uh, Things Fall Apart. But I mean, mm -hmm. it was still had, it still had that underground appeal though, but yeah, they started taking off a little bit more after things fall apart. Because then they got the Def Jam, Def Jam deal. They had signed with Def Jam after they left off of Griffin Records. So. Yeah. Imagine if Big Pun was on that album. I heard he was supposed yeah. to be on that album. Imagine that. Yeah. It's just been sick. What years were those? Of the Boo Roots? No, uh, the, yeah, th one, things yeah. Fall Apart was 95. Mm -hmm. Ill Dove Half-Life was 96. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was 96 and, and Things Fall Apart was 99. Okay. Yeah, yeah I wasn't, one, I wasn't was big on the Roots around that time. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet, Mike. Have you got Have you got one or or Ken? Um. So, mine was originally was two. I was gonna say because I'm like, oh, yeah, that better. Mm -hmm. Um, mine was originally cute, but then I thought about it and I was like, <laughs> I like those albums. I love those albums, but I don't know that I listen to them as much mm. as I listen. If we're talking about nineties. I probably listen to the Gangstar run more. Mm. So if we're talking, mm. if we're talking Gangstar, we, I, I'm going Daily Operation, Hard to Earn, Moment of Truth. Mm. I wow. listen to those more just yeah. because, like, my family's from Boston, mm. so I kind of got shoved <laughs> those albums. Like, you, you couldn't be hanging out with the club wow. 
unless you had unless you had Guru playing. Mm. So, and I liked Pac, um, but I think I just listened to that run more. If we're talking about nineties, what years was the, were those? 92, 90, Hold on, 92, 93, and ninety eight. Ninety four. Ninety four. Yeah, uh, Discog says ninety three. Oh, ninety four. It was it was right before Illmatic came out. Hold on, Let's see. I think I, I think I believe beat more than Discog. Yeah, I tip- <laughs> <laughs> it was ninety four. You, know, you know why it says ninety three? Well, because there was a promo that came out in ninety three. Uh, yeah, but but you know they used to promo albums long as hell back then. <laughs> so but the album, the album, ninety four. The album came out in ninety four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Hey. Oh, I, don't know. Like, I don't know why you challenged me. The album came out in ninety four. I don't know why you challenged me. I wasn't. I was really the fucking moment of truth is ninety eight. Yeah. Damn. Is there is there a reason you didn't go step in the arena? You prefer Moment of Truth more than Step in the Arena. Yeah, I think I think I listen to Moment of Truth more than Step in the Arena. I don't really, I don't really listen to Step in the Arena at all. I'm very, I know it's a good album. It is, mm. but I'm just not. I'm rarely in the mood for that old mm. of hip hop because that album sounds old. It really mm. does. It sounds old. I don't care. <laughs> it does it sounds old i mean yeah. primo wasn't really up to his primo into, into yeah. daily operation yeah, exactly. daily operation that's came when out. it really started man those yeah. cuts and all that shit that's man. when it really started so yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Okay, I'm feeling that. I'm glad you said Gangstar. I've been out of all these runs. We talked about all of them, right? And you know, you start reappreciating stuff. The Gangstar run is just—I've completely reappreciated how incredible it really is. Slept on, yeah, yep. mm, definitely, really man. Ken, have you got anything there, bro? I do. Uh, Master, P. Uh, Master P. He about to say something. Master P. Master P. Yeah, oh, he, was he was in the nineties. He was. He, was. he had a good hood run, though. I, I did okay. look at. I did look at Master P. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead and say. Uh, I'm gonna re- represent the South, man. No, 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 no. Oh, Ball and G. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Their first. Yes. The first three album. albums. Absolutely. Coming out hard. Um. Uh. On top of the world. Mm-hmm. And shut up. Hold on. <laughs> I got you, bro. I got you. No, I, you don't. I got know it. the second. Yeah, hold on. I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you. I'll yeah, let you. Cross the bricks on it, and break mm-hmm. a bitch college on it. Um, <laughs> you at the front uh, of the class about to come on, man. You missed the best you one. Bro. I know it's the second album. It's the second one. <laughs> come on, kid. I'm com- <laughs> it's your it's your pick, bro. <laughs> no, he almost said I'm coming. That would have been real interesting. Huh? Yeah. He said, "Come on, Ken. Ken almost said I'm coming." No, I did. <laughs> 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 On the outside looking in. Thank you, bro. We had faith in you. I was like, I was like, come on. Yeah, yeah. that was a good. That, that was yeah. a good run, bro. Yeah, I, I definitely had that one on my list. All uh, three of those albums. Yeah, All yeah. Coming out hard was ninety three. On the outside looking in was ninety four. Yep. Top of the world ninety five. Yep. Yep. bro, that was a good ass run, bro. Top yep. of the world, diamonds and pearls, all the like. Yeah, yeah, man. That's a good pick. Bro. Wow. That that, yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's wicked. Yeah, Have man. you do you still do you still play them albums? Do you still bump them albums like today? Not as much as I would like, because I'm always kind of like listening to new stuff. Mm-hmm. But if out of the three, the second one on top of not on top of the world, but uh the second one is the one that I would play the most. Okay. Um but ah, man, like the, the first two are certified classic. Certified, bro. Like, you know, um And the third yeah. one has a classic so, song, man, like classic does. song on yeah, there. They say it's pimping, man. Yeah, Everybody does. knows that from the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mind is awaiting. <laughs> yeah. Yes, bro. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm liking that. Can you hear that sound today? I was that's one thing about that run. I'm wondering if that sound's still around today or is it very much of its time? What do you reckon? That's outcast. The, the flow, okay. the flow, definitely, man. The, the yeah. flow, man. Like they had some really good flows that mm-hmm. I can hear today. Mm. Um, even some of the beats, I think. Even some of the beats was, was could be today. So I, I always thought Big Boy sounded like he could have come straight out of that class. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Not not Dre. Yeah. yeah. But I always thought, especially like once they stopped rapping really fast. Yeah. I always thought Big yeah. Boy's flow was closer mm. to that to class. that type of style. Yeah. 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 yeah man. I, I think MJG definitely could could still rap today. Yeah. Uh, with this style, oh, wicked! Um, they good, actually. Yeah, I don't think about it. Damn. And in that sa- in that same vein, though, man, I-, I even had uh UGK on here too. They had a pretty good, good, um, good run. Mm-hmm. 
with uh, S- super tight. Yeah. Um, so no, it was like that, too hard to swallow. Too hard to swallow. Too hard to swallow. Super, super tight, tight and Ryan Durley. Ryan Durley. Those Durley. three are, are, are good. Really good, good albums. Hell yeah. Those three. No, I don't no. know if I would put that run up against any of the ones. We yeah. That's why I said that. I yeah. think they're honorable mention. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and that's why I say kind of in the same vein. They're not topping UG uh, uh, A Ball MJG, but I think you know we was going groups. I, I I could put that up there, you know. I I, yeah, I got a lot. Of I groups. could play that card. I little. think the one that would would probably <clears throat> hurt it the most is Super Tight. Mm-hmm. I think that that middle one. But Super Tight had like Pocket Full of Stones Part Two mm-hmm. on it. Had uh, yeah, it did. Was Tell Me Something Good on that? No, that was on the first. one. That was on the first one. Yeah, that was on the first one. But yeah, it was some, it was some good joints on it on that Super Tight. Mm-hmm. Like what the, year was that? What year was Super Tight? Super Tight was ninety four. Ninety four. Yeah. Yeah. Too hard to swallow was ninety two. Uh, Super Tight was 94 and Riding Dirty was 96. I played the hell out of Riding Dirty. Damn, Riding Dirty was 96. It doesn't feel like it was 96. It's crazy. Yeah, it don't. It don't. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. 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 What'd you say? So which one had Pregnant Pussy on? Is that the sec? I think that is Super Tight. No, that's not Super Tight. That's, um, hold on, let me see. Let's I check. I screenshots. It don't matter. I just think that's the song. <laughs> you remember that? You remember that song? You heard that? You remember that song? <laughs> I didn't know you. I remember that song. I didn't know you were listening. He is the best. (laughs) Fucking the girl while the baby sucking. Yo, (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know you was listening to UGK like that. I wasn't. I wasn't listening to UGK like that. But somebody played that song while we were skating one day, and I was like, "What is this? This is the best best song I've ever heard in my entire life." That's crazy. I got the fat pregnant pussy on the water. That might be. And I'm not the bus in that. That might be too hard to swallow. I can't see it on Too Hard to Swallow's uh, track list. Uh, no, that, that, that might have been later on. That might have been later on. Later yeah. on. Yeah. I don't think yeah. that you're talking about. But but real quick, uh, let's see. So let's see. <laughs> yeah, on the second one, yeah. the song I Left It Wet For You. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I Left It Wet For You. All right, so yeah. Those dudes were disgusting. Yeah. Was, so they were. I didn't, yeah, they <laughs> were. Those dudes were just. They really yeah. were. Yeah. Like, tell me something good. Y'all heard the yeah. the, the, the explicit version? Man. Oh, my man. God. Yeah. Oh. Like, the thing is, like, I don't think people now, because they just know Bun B is just like a legend. Yeah, I think, yeah. right. I think half the people that say Bun B's a legend yeah. never really listened. Never heard of him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They would look at him different. Yeah, they would yeah. be like, you're the guy that was talking about leaving like, mm-hmm. his spots on people's bed sheets? Right. That was you? Oh, this big, right. sweet, lovable, giant guy? Mm-hmm. Damn. That is crazy. That's quite oh, cool yeah, though. You, sorry, go on, go on, Rod. You got you got something. No, go just real it. quick, I was saying that Super Tight had Pocket Full of Stones too. And front, front, back, back, side, side to side. Front, Woo. back, side, side to side. side. Yeah, dog. <laughs> Never <laughs> let whole ass niggas yep, ride. Yep. <laughs> 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 yeah. Fairs in town. Yeah, Fairs in town. That's what I'm saying, man. Three, was three six teams on that? Three sixteens was the yep. last song on that. Yep. yep. Pussy got me dizzy. <laughs> got me dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they was I'm telling man. you. Three albums, man. That, that was a good album. Yeah. Too hard to swallow, super tight, and Ryan Dirty. That front back side to side was hard. That was right. everywhere. Man. Man. That shit. That was Dang. Yeah, bro. But I'm loving these because people have come on and they haven't really given these ones. These are a little bit more under like uh what's the word maybe hidden hidden gem runs if you know what i mean because mm-hmm. I, I think everyone's gone tribe and there's i don't know what you guys think to red man's run or mobs run yep, i got that on here <laughs> uh of yeah. course you do man <laughs> i mean yeah. if, 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 there's, if, there's, if there's any if there's any that you think out of those that deserve a bit more shine i'm here to hear like underrated ones because you've already gone ugk which i feel like needs more shine are there any other runs that you think like are a little bit underrated red man's a good good example of that i feel a little bit I think it'd be more nineties one. Well, I I, mean, I have I have a I have a couple more like B. I, I can go through um, a couple more. I mm. think just kind of going back real quick to the Master P joint because he had Ice Cream Man, Ghetto D, and mm. then the one before last, that I think was the last nine. done. I think it was last, last done. Mm, That's the only. I don't think the last done was. I think the first one, Ninety Nine Ways to Die. I think. Mm-hmm. See that that's that's real underground though, like mm. but, yeah, but, it is. But you know, he looked for the hidden gems. Like that's yeah, it. I think the the strength of that would be Ice Cream Man and and Ghetto D. Like those two albums right there, yeah. like just completely like damn near changed. Well, Master P in general, mm. just as a businessman, mm. but them just 
taking something that was so freaking hood <laughs> and becoming mainstream yeah. without being able to freaking rap all that well, <laughs> you know, is is something that you know most people don't don't talk about. Why do you I like think his? people disrespect? Sorry, I Go think on. people. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, that's a good question. I think people just respected his realness, man. Like when he. When he was on tracks, it just felt so real, yeah. and it was so relatable to like to like dope boys. You know, mm -hmm. I, I grew up in a, in a in an area where you know flooded with dope boys, and like that was one of the things that they always respected about Master P. He taught, he spoke for the streets. Like, mm. yeah, I, even though he couldn't like rap like that, it just he was just talking to him. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And then sometimes, you know, even today, that's what I respect about a lot of rappers when they just kind of like. Like Kai is one of my favorite MCs. Like obviously he raps way better than Master P, but mm. I feel like Kai talks to you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He raps slow, his beats are it's no drums. It's like he really wants you to hear the words. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh that's how Master Master P was. Yep. And then and then and then like the difference with Master P is that he had the drums, he had the bass and all that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. people had that. Like Break You Off Something Man was like a hood anthem. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like yeah. Never Ending Game was a hood yeah. anthem. Like all okay. of that stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. Loved I, it. Yeah, yeah. My, my about it, about it. Oh my yep. God. Yo, my cousins, man, they they um I mean they they ran the streets, they used to do all that shit. Mm -hmm. Dealing with everything. Some of them motherfuckers still locked up. And um, and I was just over at my grandmother's house just just Chilling, whatever, and they were outside, radio blasting, mm -hmm. and Master P was playing. And I was, I was a little snobby back then about my hip hop. I was like, man, listen that whack ass shit. <laughs> and, um, but then he was, you know, it, it was one of the lyrics. He was like, uh, "Michael Jordan is no fucking hero." Hero to me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hero yeah. To me, yeah. And for whatever reason, it just clicked. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, now I, I, I kind of get it. It's not mm -hmm. about how well you can rap. Mm -hmm. It's about the realness. The right is 100 percent right. It's about the realness of what they were saying. Mm -hmm. They were speaking to guys that, you know, that kind of lived that life. Like mm -hmm. tribe wasn't really necessarily speaking to them like that, or they, you know, so they mm -hmm. were. And then they had the 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 beats that went along with it. So yeah. you could ride around listen to that shit and it, it would sound good. You yeah. know, people like the type of music. He knew what the streets wanted, man. Mm. He, he really knew what the streets wanted. Ice cream man, like the call, the album was called Ice Cream Man, and and, and like just on somebody on the service level wouldn't know what that is, but you know what that is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. yeah, it, it, it was, he was really clever with it, man. So it wasn't about sweets. It <laughs> <laughs> wasn't about 31 flavors, I'll oh, tell no. you that. <laughs> Definitely wasn't. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Just interrupting this episode to give you a quick update on our plans for 2021. But before I do, just remember to subscribe on YouTube and like this video. Also, get involved in the comments. We always have some dope takes on there. So shout out to people that are getting involved. We love reading them. And hopefully some more of you guys can get on there and we'll shout you out on the episodes coming up. Now, on to 2021. We here at Crate 808 are setting up a Patreon where for the price of a pint or a coffee every month, we'll be bringing you even more dope hip hop episodes. Simply go to crate808.com, subscribe to the newsletter, you'll get all the updates on our plans. But as a taster, each month we're thinking of bringing you 90s rap hidden gem album reviews that you can vote for. So if you enjoy people like Master Ace, Diamond D, The Lynch Mob, Paris, Big Noid, Blase Blase, we'll be doing a lot more of those. We're going to do our Why I Love series, the MF Doom and Jay Dilla editions. Each month we'll bring on a guest and dig into why they love a certain Doom or JD track and then test that love. How deep is that love? So expect some nostalgia right there. Next up, Wu-Tang Chronicles, Ghostface Killer Edition. We're aiming here, I don't know if it's gonna be good or bad, but we're aiming to go through every solo Wu project and we're gonna start with Ghostface catalog. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna talk about the music, we're gonna talk about the fashion sets and just some of the amazing bars he's dropped in that career. So you can expect that as well. And then for every patron who comes on, get your name on the credits, the Crate 808 credits and in our Hall of Fame. So that'll be, you know, I don't know how that's going to look right now, but we're going to give each of you a little bit of shine and a shout out on the show. And uh, the Griselda Marathon, I want to do it, I want to do it. If we get enough patrons, we're going to do it. We're going to go through every single Griselda project and really let's dive in, yeah? So get involved. Hit up Crate808.com, subscribe to the newsletter as well as the YouTube and the podcast. Now back to the episode. Now, I want to I want to see which way y'all go with this. One. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Nobody's mentioned Bob Deep yet. Okay, yeah, okay. 
B, I'm not talking about you because I know every fucking rapper on your list. No, it's not. No, you're not. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> now, would you go Juvenile Hell, the infamous Hell on Earth, or would you go Infamous, infamous Hell, Hell on, on Earth, Earth and Murder, murder music. music? Okay. All I day. Too. All <laughs> day, every day. But I can see somebody arguing uh, Juvenile Hell, but I don't listen really? to that album. I don't ever listen to that album. Mm. Yeah. That's, oh, it sounds a bit bad. dated. Yeah. Not my beat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 They were still raw and they it was like super raw. They wasn't like they wasn't that. polished yet. Yeah, 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 they wasn't really polished yet. Infamous, they were polished. Infamous, hell on earth, they were polished. Hell on earth. Murder I've music. heard I've heard people kind of not shit on murder music, but just not prop it up like that. And I'm Are just you like, serious? Why? I don't know. I'm, oh, oh, you said I'm, I'm not okay. me. Okay, okay. I love that album. Man, I'm saying, I've seen people on Twitter. Um, wasn't there a little bit more mainstream around the time though? Maybe that's why they're complaining. Yeah. Maybe yeah. But they were still like gutter as fuck. About yeah. Shit. So, yeah. Anytime you got a dude that's four feet tall, constantly <laughs> laughing, right. killing a motherfucker, right. but doing it nice. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not like when Bushwick Bill was talking about killing people. It was like, all right, bro. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I believe you can do it, but I'm just not really worried about it today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For some reason, man, when fucking Prodigy did it, it was like, I believe, I believe you, you did. and I believe <laughs> that you might really fly here. And <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah, man, Pac ruined ruined uh, a mob deep for me. I didn't really listen yeah. to to mob Let's deep in the nineties. Yeah, man, I like Pac just had me not listening to East Coast for a minute, man. Really? Because I was such a big Pac fan. Yeah, I had a, mm-hmm. he influenced me a lot, man. So, uh, so yeah, it, I didn't I didn't get into the to the mob deep train till later, and boy, oh, did wow, I miss really? out. Yeah, man. Rod, I'm kind of yeah. with you, man. Because when I was here in Pac, okay. I was the same. I, he was like uh, huh. just like a, a gateway mm-hmm. drug. <laughs> he was like yeah, yeah, yeah he had so yeah, much yeah. about him. He was bigger than music. Like you know, over here, yeah, man. man, he's on news for other things. It ain't about his music. And I feel like <laughs> it took Hell on Earth. I remember listening to Hell on Earth and hearing drop a gem on him. And I think they dropped that after he passed away. And I was like, fuck these guys, man. Like they, they don't care. Right. They, dro- they dropped this and he's dead. Like he ain't gonna yes. retaliate to this. And th- you know, it's really sad. But also, like, these guys didn't care. And and that whole album, Hell on Earth, for me, is it's my favorite mob album. I love that album. It's yeah. crazy. Um I remember like seeing them live was such a weird thing because I didn't know that Prodigy was so little. Mm. Yeah, but it was almost like it was almost like he didn't know he was little. <laughs> yeah, like when they would come out on the stage, it didn't like. Did you go to that show? It was um, a tabernacle. Me, and you went. Yeah, it was me. You thought he was little? Say again. You thought he was little? What do you mean? But God thought tabernacle? he was little. What do you mean? Huh? <laughs> God thought he was little. I think God he, created him. Little. I thought he was slow, man. No, he, no, 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 no. I don't mean big. Like, oh, he was short. Like, hi, yeah, he's. Oh like, yeah, short. he was like five one. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah he's short. Both of them. I mean. Him and Havoc is short. Him and Havoc is short. I didn't see him as, yeah. as being little because he was on the stage. I was there too, so but I, I filmed it. I filmed it. No, you're talking about A3C. Oh, what y'all talking no, about? No, we went to, they we had a separate to show. That, it was I, Ghost, I, Ghost and Ray oh, and Mom D. I remember oh, we went to that shit. Okay, Ghost and Ray and Mom D. I saw him before he went to G. What'd you say? He just said it's the, the lineup was Ghost, Ray, and Mob Deep. How did you Mob guys survive? Better. How yeah. you survived that? Yeah. I don't know why these guys didn't go. That show was crazy. Hell yeah. What was that? That was yeah, years ago. Like two, I think I was 2015, 2014 or something like that. I think I, did y'all go together? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was out of town and y'all went to, yeah, because I, I wanted to go to that, but y'all, yeah. y'all I was out of town. I remember we that. Wasn't gonna, I wasn't going to miss I that show. That shit was dope. Hell but I yeah. saw him before he went to jail. But I oh, forget okay. what, um, was it Cotton Club? They play here like, mm-hmm. like maybe. Or when did he go to jail? I don't know. Like the know. early two thousands, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. No, it was after. No, was it, later than it that? was at, later than that. Either way, I saw him when before he went to jail. He oh, okay. wasn't, He wasn't swole. Oh, okay. See, I, I thought mean, y'all was talking about A three C. No, no. A three C. He was swole. I've seen Mob Deep like three or four times. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like first time I saw him, I was like, "That's the dude." <laughs> That's you know, funny. such thing as halfway cr- like that's him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like God damn, he's small. But yeah. the thing is, when he rapped. It yeah. didn't feel like that. Yeah, no, didn't. Sure. But then when we saw him, I was like, God <laughs> damn! What happened to him? He got like, he was like Ram Man from here. Yeah, he yeah. came out, he was just like, yeah, right, call me little again and see what happens. But yeah, man, That's my people was something special, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. 100%. No, no, definitely. 100%, man. Yeah. Do you think, I was going to ask you guys, really, you know when you guys put these things together and you were like, is it, when you were actually thinking about who your picks are or who some of your favorite runs are, what are the keys mm-hmm. to having a good run? To, for you guys, like personally, is it rewindability? Is it growth? Is it that sustainability you can play it for like the rest of your life? Were there certain things that went through your mind when you were picking these? 
That's a good question. You say, I think you said Mike. No, whoever, who, who, whoever's, whoever's uh, got him. Yeah, yeah, open floor, man. Um, for me, like, uh, Pac, Pac was just so influential. Like, like that's we already kind of said that, right? Mm. Uh, I always liked his beats, even on strictly for my niggas. Like, it was just so so hype. And then he was, and then then he was able to like just kind of make it more mellow with all eyes on, not all eyes on me, but uh, me against the world. Mm. Like, I don't know, man. It it's it just. Like that shed so many tears. Like mm. it's just so infectious mm-hmm. the beat in that. But that those are the main things. Just his rapping ability, the beats, mm. and just his influence was was mainly for me for the pop pick. Yeah, I think uh, sustainability and of course nostalgia, <clears throat> just being connected, you know, to those albums mm. and them being of just top quality. Like albums, I feel like I can hand to um, some some. Some, the younger generation, and they may not like all of it, but they can kind of, you know, get an understanding of what a particular, what the sound was like in the 90s. Mm. You know, so I think that based on, you know, all of our picks, you get something from the South, you get something from the West, mm. you get something <laughs> from the East Coast. <laughs> like, you get, you get, you get, you get the full gamut of what <clears throat> hip hop was, and you get a chance to really get, um, kind of like, uh, taste those different flavors so uh, yeah so yeah that that's it for me man just just my connection to those albums and those artists and just remembering you know good and bad times for sure man what about you um, so so for me i think what from my albums we, the albums that i picked is you know you gotta think in a time during the 90s parents look so you know older our parents or you know older folks look so down on hip-hop whereas like this is around the time my dad started like appreciating hip hop. So for him, for me to listen, you know, play these albums that has jazz elements in it and everything, mm. he can appreciate that. Like he was really appreciative of that. So it was like, it was cool playing the damn Roots album loud as hell in my house and not hearing my dad saying, turn that down or, or turn it off or whatever, whatever. Like if I was playing NWA or something else, but yeah. it was cool to like play like hip hop jams and then have my dad come to my room like, hey man, play it again. Like, all right, cool. So yeah, yeah. that shit was like, that was like a phenom back then because a lot of parents wasn't messing with hip-hop, you know, when I was growing up. Yeah, man, for sure. Um, I was actually going to say then, that's interesting because you guys are talking about how this is in the past and if we're opening it up and just talking about album runs generally then in hip-hop, like oh, fr- from the 90s to now. Uh, one, I was going to ask if you think there's been any runs that you think are going to stand the test of time. And two, yeah, in today's world, is it easier or harder to have an album run with everything that's going on, everyone dropping more albums or not even really considering them albums and putting them out as playlists. Like, I don't know, where do you guys stand on that? Uh, to answer the question, whether it's harder or easier, um, I don't think it's harder because of all the music that's dropping. I think if, if, if you're staying true to who you are and you just make albums that the people that you, you know, that liked your music, you keep it consistent. I think for the most part, you know, whether you know you have hundreds of albums dropping a year, they're still going to gravitate towards that artist. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's who they like. Like I said, Kai is a perfect example for me. Rock Marciano is an example for me. Like it don't matter how much music comes out, it's not going to stop me from liking a Rock Marciano album. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, you know, to answer that part, part yeah. of the question. How about? Oh no, man. That's a good Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go, go for it, man. Go for it. Open floor. I was going to say, I think it might be a little bit harder to have a legendary run after, say, like 2005 or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because, like, I mean, who who really has a run that can go up against, like, a pop or a Q since then? Unless you're talking about a Kendrick yeah, or a mm-hmm. Kanye. Uh-huh. But other than that, like, who's had a legendary run that you feel like is going to stick 15 years from now? I mean, I have somebody. Eminem? But... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I feel like Eminem's kind of like a cheat code. I feel mm-hmm. like I don't even have to mention him, but yeah, you're right. But Eminem. that's three though. You talk, you said Kanye, Kendrick, and and um and Eminem. That's three people right there. Right, but I I feel like we could probably if we were going from like the '80s to the '90s, right? Mm-hmm. We could probably we can name, name like a 20, lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. But from from but if, let's say if we were going from 2005 to 2020, mm-hmm. could we really name that many? Maybe four. That would have that have had a legendary run. Legendary. You know what I mean? I think it's easy to have a good run where people are like, damn, that dude just put another album out mm-hmm. and it's still mm-hmm. dope. Mm-hmm. But to have like a legendary run that's up there, 
with the pox and the cubes and the outcasts. I don't know. I think it's kind of hard these days. And it feels like the fans are, are some can be somewhat fickle when yeah. it comes to like uh, some of these artists and, and their, their albums, especially if, you know, that third album in the run, if it sounds different or mm -hmm. from what they're used to then, mm -hmm. or against the grain, then they were like, nah, that shit was back instead of letting it kind of breathe yeah. on its own. Well, that and music is so disposable now mm -hmm. that people don't like, don't hold on to shit the way we did. Yeah. Like yeah. an album comes out, remember like album will come out every three or four years. Album comes out, you fucking sit on it, you're like, man, this shit is so goddamn good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next one comes out a couple years later, you're like, damn, mm -hmm. this shit's good too. Yeah. And if he hit you with that third one and that third one is good, you're like, oh, this uh, guy this, is this, yeah, certified. This, yeah. It, it, yeah. Nobody he's a fish, dude. Right. <laughs> right. But nowadays, it's just like people just expect the third album to be good. They're like, okay, yes. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good. It's, it's as good as the second one, so cool. Mm -hmm. But nobody gets excited. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> Like when we're since we're opening it up past the '90s, I'm gonna go ahead and start it off. When this dude dropped three in a row, that were just incredible. I was blown away. All right, no, you gotta go. Who? I don't. don't. Who? It's gotta be Doom. Fuck you, yeah. All caps on his When that dude had, he had, he seriously had. That's it's hard. That. It's hard to really put it together. Yeah, because he was bouncing off the. But, he mm. had like a seven album. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say you can. It's like with Pac, you can just go. Yeah, you can go, you can go from, anywhere. You can go anywhere. You can go <laughs> anywhere. The yeah. only album that you could even attempt to fix your lips <laughs> and criticize is the JJ Doom one. Yeah, but yeah. That's even good. then, I, like, that shit grew up. And that's a good that's album. That's a good album. album. Yeah, yeah, I really only hear people in the United States shit on it. I didn't realize that. Um, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but people. Mm that are in the UK seem to embrace that album more. Yeah, definitely. I don't really know, I don't really know why. I, but I, well, at that time, he was, I think he was coming over to the UK as well at one point. But when you've got tracks called Governor and like stuff like that, <laughs> that that's, that's a very <laughs> English thing. But also it is that kind of experimental, it's a little bit different, but he always did that, right? And yeah. I remember what you're saying there, because I remember people weren't even talking about him after that run and then that's that came out and then was like, oh no this guy still actually is the king like he, he is yeah, still right. like gonna kill everyone mm -hmm. just with that's that um but yeah i'm with you there i think I, i'm with doom I, i'm absolutely with doom on that uh, but yeah if there's any other runs i want to hear the black milk run because i know b's a fan i mm. love black milk's yeah. run from sound the alarm yeah. to maybe tronic i don't know but that run for me personally that was the albums that i was i was constantly rinsing those Mm -hmm. Is he on your little list? Yeah, he's on my list. Oh, too. Of course, he <laughs> he's on he's on my list. You got everybody, I bet MGK's yeah. on your. Who, fucking who list. else you got on that list? Yeah, yeah. Gee, on your fucking no, list. No, no, no. <laughs> who else? Gee, easy. <laughs> but, um, okay, so the, the person the person I have for this, I guess for this, you know, um, uh, decade or whatever, I got uh, Kai with the Nice Gambit, Honor Kill the Samurai, and The Sinners of Cain. Mm -hmm. Like I think that's it. And then not to mention the other the other album he had. Um, Orpheus and Orpheus, um, yeah. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. I, yeah, I forgot yeah. that, but that's that. You can you can throw that in between there. So it's just like, yeah, Kai has had an amazing run. Uh, this these last ten years, it's it's crazy. Car, Car or Rock's run. If you were gonna pick, what I'm sorry to do this, but if they were, <laughs> if you were gonna pick one of those as your favorites, I'm I'm with Car. I'm with you guys on Car. But Rock's run from Jesus. You could do that with Rock though, right? Yeah. Like you, could, Rock Marcy, yeah. you could really do that. Mm -hmm. You can, you can, well, for me, yeah, I can go either, I can go either way too. I can go from, from Rosebud Revenge to the joint he did with Mugs, Chaos, mm. Dark, uh, Behold, Behold a Dark Horse. Yeah. Or either Marsburg, Reloaded. Reloaded. Uh, whose run is better? I think that's the question. Oh, that's his run. Mm. Damn. <laughs> He's trying to cheat his way out of answering. Even though I, I love Cod <laughs> these days, I still would go rock. I think I might have to. Because I'll I go, go I'll go Marsburg, Reloaded. <laughs> and what was that to reload it? Cause uh, he had some mixtapes in there somewhere. Yeah, he had like yeah, Mercy Buku, yeah, yeah, mixtape. But then Rosebud Revenge was the next album album. Rosebud Revenge. So yeah, so if we just going strictly albums, I would go Mossberg, Reloaded, Rosebud yeah, Revenge. Yeah. But like, Damn. but like, I listen to Pimp Power Strikes Back, and I listen to Mossberg, uh, Mossberg, and all, Mar yeah. Marcy Buku and yeah. all that. So mm. yeah, rock. I had to go. Rock. We had to go with rock too. Okay. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. But, that, but it there hurts you go, right? Like Mike, you were saying there from twenty. 2005 to 2020, we've named, obviously there's Ken Kendrick, we've put that in there, but like Rock, Car, Run the Jewels have had a run. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I just don't know that I would put, I don't know that I would put 
a, even though I love Ka <coughs> and I really like Rock, I don't know that I would put them in that legendary run category. Mm. Like if if I was making a list of mm-hmm. the top twenty legendary runs in hip hop, mm. I don't know that Ka and Rock would make it. And that's no mm. disrespect to either one of them. Mm. I just don't know that I would put them on there. Interesting. Hey, what about uh, Race of Nine? Layers, Book of Ryan, and, and Allegory. That's not a legendary. Legendary, like so you put that up legendary. against Pox? No, that's no. a solid run, though. It's a solid. It is. Run. It is. Yeah. It's, it's it's an incredible run, mm. especially for an MC that late in his career. Yes. Yeah. That's in, that's super impressive for him, especially for an MC mm. that used to rap about different shit. Like those three albums, that's a different voice. Yeah. For that to be a different really voice is. and have that run, it that's really incredible. Is. Okay, so, I'm gonna so, throw a mainstream one out there. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I know. Yeah, be oh, okay. like that. Let somebody else talk. <laughs> <laughs> what about Jeezy? TM 101. Go back to B's list. What else you yeah. got, B's? I was gonna throw. <laughs> Really? I, was, I was going through. No, nah, Jeezy good. I don't know if it could stand like like no. what he's saying though. Mm. See, he 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 put he put a a. a, a a variable in there that fucks everything. Yeah, I, know, right? <laughs> I thought it was the best run. I thought it was the best run. No, well, well, well it is. I mean, but we we talking about today because because it's hard to go against the golden age. You know what I'm saying? So, but there are like artists out here like Jeezy had that's, a solid that, run. That's a that's a run, bro. Yeah, mm. it's that's solid. a run. My president is black. Put on, <laughs> off the recession alone. Yeah, and then uh, that second one though was kind of the TM 102. That was. Mm, yeah, I mean, it wasn't whack. It, it wasn't whack, but it was bangers on it. Yeah, but it wasn't. Okay, it wasn't like ten one on one in recession. Went up. You talking about, uh, and then you're like, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, that's, that's not. That's, that's not. That's not, that's not, not, that's not, <laughs> not the sign of an yeah. incredible run. That's what I'm saying. It's a good run. Not okay, incredible. yeah, it's I a would, good I run. Was, I mean, this live rap had a good run. Right. I mean, shit, I would. I would. Even if we were having this discussion, I wouldn't even throw L in there. But if we're talking about good runs, shit. I think he had a fucking incredible run mm. from Fantastic Damage to Austin Sleeping Dead, Dead, Dead to Cancer for Cure. Mm. And, like, for, mm. if we're talking about for underground indie rap, mm-hmm. I don't think many people were touching that three album run. They really weren't because he was really changing the way people were thinking about mm. producing albums back then. Yeah. And I would put nothing against Jeezy, but <laughs> I would put that run over Jeezy's. Because then you'll be remi- Sorry, sorry. No, no, go, Rod. You got no, something, man. I, rem- I will remember. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, that's interesting you're saying that because that's more about the impact you're having on the music there and then, right? A lot of these runs right. in the 90s did that. I don't know if, um, well, Mars- Rock Marcy definitely does, but I'm not sure if Carr does something. It's actually, imp- he doesn't care. He's not doing it for anyone else. He's doing it right. for himself. Mm-hmm. It's almost like he's mm-hmm. like, it doesn't matter about changing anything. He just lives in his own universe, right? Whereas yep. L, I think you're right there. That that definitely changed a lot of Sonics, what I was listening to anyway. But yeah, it's interesting, man. Sorry, Rod, you were going to say, man. Like, if you think about like just the rhyme style, period, mm. he birthed a lot of people off of Fantastic Damage. Mm. Like a lot of dudes started doing that whole shit where you don't have to worry about your, your rhymes actually rhyming all the time. Yeah. Like a lot of dudes, like you could just put on fucking Deep Space 9 Millimeter. And you can fucking trace like 30 different careers that came from that song. Yeah. Easy if you're talking about indie rap. So, yeah. Yeah. I feel that. I touching L back then. No, I was just going to say real quick, like uh, just kind of going back to the 90s real quick, we would be remiss if we didn't mention Outkast because we didn't, we didn't mention Outkast. Was, that's not 90s. That is it 90s. Is, it is, yeah. So, yeah. Southern Play, their, their main Southern, Southern Play playlist, playlist of Cadillac Music 94, AT, AT Aliens yeah. 96, Aquimini 1998. Okay, because they were on my list. Yeah, but for I, some thought reason, we I thought they though. were out of the 90s. I know, yeah, right? I thought he mentioned it. Yeah. At some I, point, I, I thought we mentioned Outkast. Wow. Yeah. They were mentioned. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. They, were, they were right under Doom for me, but I thought mm-hmm. they were, I don't yeah. know why I thought they were not. So, that's a good run. And then Stankonia obviously is at 2000, isn't it? So, you could go for it. Yeah. No, you're right now. Yeah. Now that I got my dates right, <laughs> <laughs> legendary. legendary. Definitely, I would put over a lot of people we've named so far. Mm. Mm. I would put them over Guru, probably. Okay. I think their run is more legendary than Guru. Yes. Yes. Mm. Gang stars. Nah, for sure. For sure. Why did I think they weren't 90s? Mm. Yeah. Because um, that's interesting. Because where we are, I don't remember hearing that before. But where you guys are, very different. Oh, yeah. When you'd heard Southern Pl- Playlistic and AT Aliens, was there anyone even slightly in that realm for you guys when you were listening? 
Say that one more time. I, I didn't understand yeah, I was the saying question. where you guys were when they were dropping to the playlistic and when they were dropping eighty aliens. Was there anyone else in the realm of hip hop that you were listening to that was even doing that stuff? Because to me, it's so different. It's so different to yeah. anything else I heard. Um, it had yeah. everything: West Coast, East Coast, everything. But yeah, it was different. It absolutely was different. Um, I w- I didn't move here to ninety nine. Uh, okay. in, to Atlanta in 99 I'm originally from Florida mm-hmm. and um, so yeah like when Outkast came out it was only like a few people that I knew that was listening to it like that because okay. uh, that was like Southern Playlist kind of like music even though that was like real South sounding mm. it still wasn't many people it was, it was kind of very regional like Atlanta yeah. I think uh, and it kind of spilled over into Florida a little bit but yeah when they started doing AT Aliens and all that stuff yeah that definitely was different mm-hmm. uh, from anything I had heard people doing Personally, I, see, I, I, I still wish I wasn't such a dick back then because I didn't give a fuck about Outkast yeah. when they were like in their <laughs> prime. I didn't get into Outkast till way later. Yeah. So I can't really speak too much about mm. was there people why, that Why was that, like, Mike, out of interest? Well, why was it? About, what was it about? Snob. I, I mean, I'm a snob now, but I mean, I was a worse snob. I was just like, <laughs> this is stupid. This is like <laughs> fucking hillbilly rap. I don't want to hear this shit. Yeah. Like, give me fucking Souls of Mischief and Casual and Dell. And Razkaz. I don't give a fuck about none of this other shit. Yeah. And then years later, I had to realize how much of a fucking dumbass. I was. <laughs> <laughs> it was the harmonica, right? In the Rosa Parks video. Is that what it really did you in? It was like, what the fuck? Say one more time. Was it the harmonica in the Rosa Parks video? Because I remember that time I was like, what? <laughs> they can use harmonicas in hip hop. It's crazy. It's amazing. That's a, that is hilarious. I think I just had a, being from California, I just had a thing against the South <clears throat> in general. Oh, yeah. okay. So it was just anything that was Southern anything. I was like, this is stupid. California yeah. was like that to Southerners? I I didn't realize that. Yeah, I did not realize absolutely. that. Absolutely, I thought yeah. we did not fuck with the South. I was from Sacramento. The Damn. only thing we knew about the South was it was hot and the clan was here. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Yo, I did not want to come here. So when I got here, there was all this like yeah. people were talking. I didn't understand what the fuck they were saying. That was the other mm, issue. That's why I didn't understand what anybody was saying when they rapped. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> the like, South mess with the West Coast, don't they? Bro, we yeah. mess with the West. So that's why. That's, that's interesting hearing Mike that say is, that. Is, yeah. I, I, you, you sure that was everywhere? I, I'm surprised you guys didn't know that, bro. We love this West. Like y'all we, looking from because so we were I, better, better we, rappers. I'm looking from from Detroit. Yeah, I always thought that Southern and West. Coast was like, yeah, I, I, I did not know that. That's yeah. news to me. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong here. I'll, yeah. if I'm wrong, I'll admit to being wrong, but I don't remember anyone from huh. my region mm-hmm. being like, oh, yeah, you hear these southern rappers? Mm-hmm. Like, no, that, yeah, because remember back then, everyone had a stigma for the southern rappers saying it was all trash because y'all couldn't rap. That was a common thing. But I didn't know, yeah, I didn't know the West was saying that too. Who, I knew, who, I knew who, the East Coast. Yeah, you know the East Coast. Coast. I yeah, East Coast was definitely New York was saying that a lot. I remember that, but I don't never, I don't ever remember that because because West Coast dudes mess with Southern dudes. Like I remember uh Tupac, uh, not not Tupac, but uh Master P was to stay. Like he he Stayed lived on the West, West Coast, yeah. for a while. Did anybody rap with and him? And they mess with him heavy. Yeah. Did anybody rap on albums with him? Yeah, I, uh, hmm. like uh, you know some of the dudes that nope. that came out the West. Nope, like like real underground cats. Nope. Cause it was on a documentary. It was West Coast guys. I bet, I bet one, he, he sold music in on the West Coast. I believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe it. <clears throat> but I think there was still like Mac, was Mac Dre from the West. Mac Dre was from California, I thought. Yeah, Mac Dre. So he messed with Mac Dre. Ice okay. Cube. Ice Cube wasn't rapping with no damn Master P. Oh, I heard. Uh... Yeah, I'm about to say, y'all stop it. Yeah, he did yeah, on the Players Club soundtrack. Though. That don't count. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that don't count. I heard Tupac. Oh, I, had, I, I I retracted that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, maybe I could be wrong. Hmm. I could be wrong. I don't remember me and my friends. There was nothing. We didn't even know that that Southern people rapped. That mm. is crazy. We thought all y'all did was sit and listen to like banjo music. Banjo. But you know, <laughs> you knew about Luke and all that, didn't you? Y'all was. I, I didn't know about yeah, Luke. Yeah, what about that three album run? Two Loud Crew. Get out of here. Two Loud Crew. <laughs> what was funny? You know what was funny? <laughs> For the longest time, I thought Two Loud Crew was from California. They look like they were, but it's, I but it's know, Miami, so it looks like mm, California. That does make sense. Yeah, that does yeah. make sense now. Mm-hmm. But back then, yeah. until I came here, I did not know that Two Live Crew was from Florida. <laughs> I, thought, oh. I thought Two Live Crew was on the same group as Kilo. That is And funny. I thought all of them were from California. Wow. Kilo's from here, though, right? Yeah. I thought he was from California, bro. <laughs> yeah. uh, that cocaine song was yeah, really popular yeah. when I was in, like, fifth grade, sixth grade, something like that. That's hilarious. Oh, I thought man. Kilo was California. <laughs> 
Because it sounded like you could tell there's a white girl in town, her name is called. <laughs> like, oh, this dude's probably from like, you know, Oakland or something. That is hilarious. Damn, that's crazy. That's just that is crazy. Really interesting to hear all that, man, because it's a context we haven't got here. So, you know what I mean? We usually hear where everyone's from. It's always a disclaimer in there. Do you know what I mean? I was going to actually talk to yeah. you guys just about two guys we haven't mentioned, uh, but they have incredible discographies, well, deep discographies, Nas and Jay. And I was, I was wondering, about, yeah. yeah, like, <laughs> where, if you were picking runs out of those no. guys, where yeah. are they? And They never... They never did. As much as I love both of them, mm. they always had like a good two album. Yes, and then yes. that third one always be a, mm. <laughs> then they have another like a good two album. And then it'd be like a, mm. and that's it's like, the only that's, reason. Yep, that's why I didn't Jay's name Jay's like my, one of my that's favorite rappers. Well, is my favorite rapper, but I could not. Yep. I, I was like, looking like, through their discographies. I was, I was really, was like I was really almost going to put them as mine, but I was like, I, I just can't, I can't do wow. Hard Not Life. Yep. I the can't closest, do, I can't do Hard Not Life. Cause I, I cause I was going to do because I was going to do Reasonable Doubt, In Lifetime, and volume, and, and, and volume 2. And I'm like, man, I really didn't listen to Volume 2 like that. Mm. And I know people that, that really didn't mess with Volume 2 like that. So even I though even it, though it commercially... Commercially, it's, yeah, that's, it's, where, he got his, that's yeah. where he got his start. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it, so technically, it could go with that 90s. Uh, it could be in that 90s group. I think mm-hmm. I think Jay can. I don't know about Nas, but I think Jay absolutely oh. can go in there. The mm-hmm. only, yeah, the only yeah. Nas I would... This I is not have, even legendary. I would put either Stillmatic, <clears throat> Lost Tapes, and Godson, but yeah. no. You guys yeah. don't feel I am at all then? Is that like just no? I am as, I am, yeah, I think, you know what? I think I am is a solid album. I think people shit on it because Jay told him to shit on it. When Jay, <laughs> when Jay said two of them shits was due, you know, like yeah. people, people, mm. I am was really good. The joint he had with Scarface, <laughs> Favor for a Favor. Yeah, I love like, that track. He had some solid joints in New York State of Mind Part Two. Like that had, run, sh- if you went Illmatic, it was written "I am." Doesn't the first two kind of carry the like- third? <laughs> I keep in mind this yeah. one that that shitted on TM One Hundred Two. I know. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I said they had hits on it, now you talking about I am. I am was better than One Hundred Two. Oh man, that's yeah. hilarious. That is that is that's not yeah. that's not yeah. a run that I put up against anything. Yeah, I know. I, I, that's why I didn't put. Nas that's why I didn't put. Two album run. Yeah, that's why I didn't put Nas and Jay because every time I was looking, I'm like, okay, the two. Jay, I'm like, where that third one? Mm. But the more <laughs> I think was, about it, Jay's could Jay's could work. Ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight. Reasonable doubt in my lifetime, volume two, because of the commercial success. I think that could mm. could. Going to uh, going to the pot. And then I it goes blueprint. I put that over Nas's. Yeah. What did you say? I was just gonna yeah. say. Then it goes blueprint. I think the thing with Jay that he's really good at is he can recover from a flop. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Like yeah. that's absolutely. a skill. Yeah. <laughs> Some people can't do that. And uh, yeah, I, I, I feel <laughs> yeah. that with him. It's like wow. He, yeah. He yeah. Can still... Because after after blueprint two, he dropped the black album. Well, oh, yep. It's come like, on, man. It's like damn, bro. Like damn. That's a recovery. So, yeah, that's a recovery for your ass right there. <laughs> right there, definitely. I'm feeling okay, that. Okay, what about what about this run in the 2000s? Um, I know people will probably say, I mean, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but Lil Wayne's run, Carter one through three. Ooh. I know people always be. I know people who would agree with you. A- Carter two and three, I can see. Uh, cause people love the hell out of Carter two, right? That's the one that had Go DJ on it. No, that's the first one. Carter one had Go DJ. And a lot of people. A lot of people love Carter two and three. I, I, I'm just saying, yeah, people no, no, no. love those Carters. First, the first, first three Carters, are yeah, yeah. They're a lot of people love, and then in between that, he had those those mixtapes. He had that mixtape run. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. first three Carters are, are, are yeah. solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah they solid. Man, they're solid. loving that, loving that. I was a uh, okay, cool. Well, that that's the runs. Is there anyone that you think is capable of that now, though? Is there any artist you're hearing now where you feel like I can see that that person's got it in the right, you know, the right things around them to maybe drop three? You said now to in today's time? Yeah, in today's time. It could be an old artist, could be a new artist, could be an artist who's I think, still delivering. I think most of the guys from Griselda, you know. Okay. Um, okay. I think they could. I think they could do it. A legendary three album run. A legendary one? I don't see it. Huh. No, and I love Griselda. <clears throat> But I don't know. What about Freddie Gibbs? Oh, there we go. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, that's Freddie my Gibbs run. Good one. Love that run. <laughs> Freddie well, Gibbs you know a good what? one. Before we move to Freddie Gibbs, let me go back to Griselda because I yeah. don't want nobody to trip out. <laughs> and the only reason I say that about Griselda was originally because I was like, well, a lot of their music tends to sound the same. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking they've been changing that. I yeah. can see Conway doing yes. an incredible three album run. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I'm not sure about Benny because Benny doesn't change that much. Mm-hmm. I can see Westside doing a weird man. <laughs> yeah. Through the album run. yeah. That would be really impressive because he pulled it off. Right. Mm. But I think if I had to pull anybody out of that group that would do a three album run that was like, oh, shit, shit. wow, he really pulled that off. Conway. I think it'd be yeah. Conway. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I agree. Can see, yeah. I can see that. That's a good one because Freddie Gibbs can rhyme over anything. Yeah. Man. yeah. Like yeah. trap, yeah. boom, bap, no drum shit. He can rhyme over anything. Yeah. Man. Yeah. His yeah. run has been serious. But then you think about Madlib and you think about Jay Zeller, those kind of runs were also like, I don't know, Madlib's is a bit different because he goes off to like India and stuff and does stuff there. So it's a bit, it's a mm-hmm. bit different. But I feel like his production in the last four or five years is kind of right up there. Um, Alchemist as well, maybe. Put that in there as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay, man. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Uh, I was going to say, guys, I know we're running out of time, right? So I'll, I'll wrap it up if that's all good because I don't want to take too much of your time up. But It's all good. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed just sitting here listening to you guys about this. This has been great. Um, I was just going to say, for people who haven't actually checked your stuff out, if there's any place we could check it out, if you can drop us a few details, Dead End Hip Hop, where can we find you guys? Well, the home base is, is the YouTube right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's, that's youtube.com forward slash dead in hip hop. 252K uh, subscribers. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Let's Been go. Been doing it for 10 years now. We're in, we in our 10th anniversary as of, fe- as of February. So that's definitely the home base. After that, I would say like Twitter, because you can find all of us interacting on Twitter for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, we're at like 48, 40, 50 K on Twitter verified. So that's a good place to find us. Uh, Instagram, all of it's everywhere you go. It's dead in hip hop. So whatever, whatever the social media is mm-hmm. slash dead in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like we got, we got all that on lock. Yeah, <laughs> man. So, so yeah. Man, congrats, <laughs> yeah, we've been doing it for a long time. Man. I was going to say congrats on 10 years, boys, by the way, that's incredible. It really Thanks, is inspiring. Man. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Appreciate, appreciate it. that. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate man. It. It's, it's, it's a slog. It's not easy, man, to be doing this all the time. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. What, is, there, is there any new stuff coming up? Because I've, I've been watching the, you know, you've dropped a few different types of like reaction videos and stuff. Is there anything different you guys are going to be dropping in the future then that we can look out for? Ken's got an OnlyFans coming next. Week. <laughs> 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 That's a couple, couple weeks. Tune in, bro. He's just going to be sitting on the couch eating chips. Yeah, right. <laughs> with no shirt on. With no shirt on. <laughs> Eating chips and just drinking beer. Wow. No, but yeah, on a serious note, man. Um, yeah, we've been trying out trying at this whole like review slash reaction thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, track reviews. That's that's kind of new for us. Um, yeah, we got some other stuff in the works, man. Um, I, I I hate talking about it because every time we talk about it, it seems like it never happens. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> but you know, we are working, man. We are working, and we definitely working for our Patreon supporters too, because we have a big following in there. Yeah, if y'all listening or watching this, man, follow us on Patreon, man. Support us there. Um, that's that's been holding us down for these, ten, you know, for the last yeah, four really. or five years. You know wow. what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the Patreon support, bro. Mm. It's crazy, mate. It's super crazy. I'm right here, Patreon, right here, man. I've been, I've been, I've been oh, on man, your, awesome. your tip for a while, man. That. So, yeah, because I, it, it, I, I like the see, I like the um, classic reviews. The classic reviews are sick. So, uh, mm. I mean, it's a yeah. nice rap podcast. So, it's like just the source of like things. For us. It's <laughs> great, but yeah, man, I appreciate that. And all you listeners out there, man, go check these guys out because it's just yeah. good energy. It's interesting. You guys have all got characters that, yeah, like it must be weird now, right? Like you guys are all friends, and now it. On Honestly, looks like you all like it's a bit like the woo, you know. Oh, this guy does this thing, and this guy. It's like you've built yourselves up to this thing. It's cool. It's wicked, man. I love it. Um, but yeah, man, thank you for your time, guys. I really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate this chat. Uh, the doors are always open if you guys ever want to come back on and chat hip hop. We're always here, man. And uh, anytime you come over to the UK, hit us up, man. We'll get you some fish and chips. <laughs> All right. I, want, I want some Yorkshire pudding. That's what I want. <laughs> there we go. There we go. You know what I'm saying? That is superb. I can't believe we talked about Yorkshire puddings on the podcast. That's not, that's, that's not happened ever. So, yeah, I love oh, that. Wait, be, before you go, real mm-hmm. quick, mm-hmm. I, I need you to clear something up for us. Okay. Do people, don't people in the UK sometimes say mate? All the time, mate. All the time. Oh, uh, and, and I've and I've heard you since 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 you since we've been on. You said mate a couple times. Yeah, See, uh, cause I, yeah. I've been to UK. I went to UK back in two thousand and five. Okay, my, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Manchester, London. Big Whatever, hope. man. <laughs> Why be hating? Why be hating? I'm, a, I'm a young black boy from the hood, man. So to go to UK, man, that was that was an awesome experience for me. I'm just oh that man, right. that's great. <laughs> yeah, it was good, man. Man, you guys should it do a tour good. thing, man. Go on tour, just do a few talks. Uh, I'll be there, that's man, the, definitely. Yeah, that's 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 you know we we would like to get to it at some point. The UK know? would be a good one. Yeah, Heck definitely, yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah, the man. support out there is crazy, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Thank yeah, you, made bro. It's own shirt, so it's got to yep. be there. Yeah, we made yep. a shirt because of the UK support. Wow. Used, I, used the, I used the blue sign with the red joint yeah. on the shirt. Yeah, man. Yeah. Sick. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> well, guys, thank you again. Keep smashing it. Keep doing your thing. And uh, we're here for it all, man. And uh, hopefully we catch you soon. And yeah, just keep doing it, man. Keep smashing it. Yeah, same same to you, bro. Same to you, man. Yeah, you man. killing it, man. Yeah, thanks, thanks, doing it. thanks for having us, bro. Yeah, thanks yeah, for inviting yeah, us. Man. I appreciate yeah, you sure. all, man. Appreciate you all. And blessings to you and your show, man. You know, I hope Absolutely. you know, blessings on growth. Hope it, you know, you get to 10 years or whatever, man. man. You know? It's a dream right now, but I'd love that. I'd love that. Yeah. <laughs> Just... <laughs> That's what's up. But yeah, man, wicked. Ken, I'll see you on OnlyFans. And then, uh, yeah, man, so... <laughs> Otherwise, I uh, uh, shall catch you soon. And yeah, uh, Mike, I'll hit you up for any bits like photos or whatever. I'll hit you up on an email. And yeah, man, wicked. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you all. All right, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah, Peace. Peace out, man. Thank you. Yeah, later, man. So there you go, dead end hip hop, bringing the flavour, uh, caught so much joke in there. And it was just really nice to chat to hip hop heads with a different perspective, like the chats about UGK, the chats about, well, the chats about Master P, all that stuff that we maybe haven't addressed too much in our runs. Bang, it's here, right here. This is this is hip hop, man. This is how big it is. There's so many people that you can't even get through them in nine episodes. But yes, so next up, we're going to have just, well, the Patreon's coming. So go to create808.com, subscribe to the newsletter. We have got more dope hip hop shows coming for you. Subscribe to our YouTube, uh, like, comment. We always like the comments. We like to read those out. We've got our mailbag on the go. Uh, go check out the mailbag episodes. And uh, in the description, we're asking for like, just, just email us, create 8 at gmail.com for r- ridiculous categories that we've got now like strangest dreams about rappers and if well let's you know let, let's not go into them too much but they're in the description and yes other than that i should catch you on the flip side we'll keep bringing you some more fire and yeah just keep doing it go spread the word tell your mum tell your friends tell your uncles and aunties tell your mates you don't talk to anymore we're out here yeah all right all right peace boom